It's Thursday, December 2nd, 2021. A lot to talk about today, ladies and gentlemen. I wanna talk about the miracle on Wall Street today. I wanna to talk about this housing bubble. I wanna talk about the jobless numbers, a lot to talk about. But before I do, I wanna share a story with you uh, from earlier today. Uh, a buddy of mine wanted to take me and another friend of mine to lunch. And so we went to a um, pretty well-known Thai restaurant and we're having lunch, sitting down, having lunch, good conversation. And I look around and I lean over to my buddy. I go, where is everybody? It's 12 o'clock noon. We're the only three people in the entire restaurant. And this is a well-known Thai restaurant. And uh, it, it, it is such a reflection of this economy, a reflection of the times. And of course, I got the food and the, the portions are smaller. Uh, the, the amount of beef and, and shrimp was half of what I would normally get and the food was barely lukewarm. And so you would think that a restaurant with only three people in it, that they would at least serve you really hot food, that it would come out of the kitchen, straight to your table and be hot. Not the case. Portion smaller, food lukewarm, prices up and nobody in the restaurant. And uh, if you're in the restaurant business, especially if you're an owner, you better be on top of your A-game right now. So many establishments are not gonna survive past 2022, for sure. Um, you gotta be serving uh, your food fresh, hot, great service. Um, you know, I understand prices are going up. There's really not much you can do about that, but you can always make sure that the food is fresh, hot, and that the service is phenomenal and that people wanna come back to your establishment. But serving lukewarm food uh, with okay service uh, and just you're charging more and getting less, people just aren't going to be playing these games. They're just not going to be coming back to these places. And when I look around, there's only three people in the entire restaurant. Um, that, that tells me something, that uh, this economy uh, is worse than most people think. Last night, I was at a seafood restaurant, and we're having dinner at 6 p.m., Nobody, zero in the dining room. Zero people in the dining room at 6 p.m. And this is a pretty well-known seafood restaurant out here. Outside on the patio, about eight people, maybe about 20% of its capacity. Nobody out, nobody out at these establishments. Now, maybe they're there on Friday and Saturday, but hey, there's seven days in the week, ladies and gentlemen. So again, if you're in the business, you better be on your A game. There's not much you can do about prices, but you can always have great service. You can always make sure the food is fresh and hot. Um, and you can always you know, make it that people wanna come back to your establishment. Now, the, the place last night, the seafood place, service was really good. Uh, the portions were the same, but prices are going up. But nobody in the dining room. So. I, I thought that was really, really uh, shocking that uh, nobody was in the dining room last night. Nobody was in the restaurant today at lunch. So just a sign of the times, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about this miracle on Wall Street today. And this was quite the miracle. Uh, Dow Jones rebounds uh, up, closes up over 600 points. S&P 500 closes up, uh, up about a percentage. And I, I gotta ask all of you, what, uh, what created this miracle today? Yesterday, we are hearing about the health crisis and the market did a 950 point turnaround. Friday, down 905. Tuesday, I think it was down 650. And m most of this always blamed on the health crisis. So the health crisis didn't go away today, it's still here. Um, but what caused the Dow Jones to be up over 600 points and the S&P uh, up a percentage? Now, I can only think about maybe one thing, and that would be the Fed coming in and buying it all up. What do you think about that? Let me, let me know your thoughts. What caused this miracle today? Because nothing changed yesterday in regards to the health crisis to today, yet the markets did do a complete 180. I read earlier that the airline stocks were up and that caused the stock market to go up today. Uh, now, in all reality, why would airline stocks be going up if we have this massive health crisis and people 
aren't flying, people don't want to travel, people don't even want to leave their homes, but yet airline stocks are going up. So the only thing I can think of, and let me know, is the Fed is in here today buying it all up as it normally does as soon as there's a hiccup or a speed bump or trouble. The Fed comes riding in and injects billions of dollars into these markets, buying it all up. Again, the buyer and seller of last resort and who else would be buying in this in, in this uh, this environment other than the Fed coming in and buying it all up? Um, let me know your thoughts. Jobless claims, maybe that's it. Maybe the jobless numbers today push the Dow Jones up over 600 points. Jobless claims, less than expected, that's the good news. They were only 222,000. 222,000 Americans filed first time jobless claims last week. The week prior to that, it was 194. So we're up uh, 30,000 more uh, this week than they, we were the prior week. And what's interesting is that we should have more people working now, this time of year, November, December, than any other time because of the holidays. People take on these holiday part-time jobs, they're working at warehouses, they're extra people working at UPS, extra people working at retailers, et cetera. So we should have more people working now than ever before, but instead, we lost uh, another 30,000 people to jobless claims uh, for, uh, from the week prior. 194,000 the week prior, 222,000 this past week. So why is that? We should, have, we should have more people working now than ever. And so the number has gone up. So I don't know, is that the good news? Uh, because they expected uh, 240,000 people to file jobless claims and it was 222,000. So that was the great news. But don't forget, we have 107 million people, 107 million people not in the labor force right now, but all we hear about is economic recovery, the economy is strong, the consumer is strong, everything's fine. But I wanna shift gears here and I wanna go into another article uh, coming from CNBC and it's titled, Thousands Could Lose or Sell Their Homes as the Health Crisis Mortgage Bailouts Expire. And look, I don't care how much money they print, uh, how, how much they want to juice these markets, uh, how much they want to tell you on the television, this economy is done. This economy has been destroyed. And we are going to see the fallout from a destroyed economy. Uh, we have not seen the fallout yet. This economy is done, ladies and gentlemen. There's no recovery coming. Uh, it's only going to get worse. Hundreds of thousands of homeowners could lose or sell their homes as health crisis related mortgage bailout programs expire. Many could sell their homes and take advantage of high equity in their homes. That has not been the case. So far, a data firm found that a third of borrowers who start the foreclosure process with at least 40% equity in their homes go to foreclosure anyways. That's um, very interesting. They may have equity, but then it's a matter of where they are going. Where are they going to go? Where are they going to purchase? So uh, according to this article, they're just going through a foreclosure. They're not even selling their home, even though they have equity in it, because they're not going to have anywhere to go. So if they make a couple bucks on the house, they're basically saying, look, it's not going to be enough to buy another house because prices have gone up since we bought this house, even though we have equity. Um, they can't keep up with the cost of housing. So if they sell, there's nowhere to go. Uh, that seems to be a very... Um, poor excuse, but I'll continue with this article. The bailouts allowed millions of homeowners to miss payments, some for up to 18 months. Ladies and gentlemen, now the bills are coming due. Hundreds of thousands of people are now beginning to realize they're in big trouble. And we're not even hearing, uh, like what happened to the eviction crisis, right? Like what's happening? How many people have been evicted? How many people are in the process of eviction right now? There's a lot of people that have been evicted and there's a lot more coming. Although we're not hearing about it because that wouldn't be the news that they want you to hear about. That's not positive economic news, although it is reality. So, you, you know, again, if, if we have 110 cargo ships off the port here in Los Angeles, it doesn't look good. Um, and everybody can see it. Everybody's flying drones. Everybody's going down to the beach and, and filming it. So what do they do? Park those ships farther out so people can't see them. That's what they do. 
what do they do in regards to the evictions? Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Out of sight, out of mind. 7.7 .7 million borrowers piled into bailout programs. 7%. That's over half a million that are in active mitigation with their lenders still trying to work on a loan modification plan. Wow. I mean, see, they're not even counting these people that are in or have been in forbearance, people in mitigation. In the real world, these properties would be delinquent. Uh, they would be in foreclosure. Uh, properties would already be in inventory. And we would see a much different world in the housing market but we're not being told the truth. Everything's being manipulated. There are hundreds of thousands of people right now not making their house payments. 3% of borrowers remain in a very tough spot. 264,000 homeowners are delinquent and 38,000 are in active foreclosure. People are now getting nervous out there because the bills are coming due and the stimmies are done the unemployment's expired, the unemployment benefits have expired, and they're in big trouble. And these people are coming um, off or out of forbearance, and they may not be working, or they have a spouse that may not be working, and a single income isn't gonna cover the expense or the mortgage payment. You know, it, uh, <laughs> we are living now in a time where it takes minimal two people to cover the mortgage or the rent, um, the car payment, and, and, and the food expense and the electricity bill. And if one person loses a job or a paycheck, they're in big trouble. The, the family's in big trouble. And, and now I, I, I think it's almost to a point where it's gonna take three people in a family. You're gonna have to have the husband, wife, and a kid working just to get by. Uh, this is why we're seeing so many cars parked in the driveways. This is why people are now moving into uh, garages. Uh, this is why people are moving back home. Uh, we're going to see a lot more of this because this is what people are going to have to do to save their home. Uh, they're going to, it's going to require people, they're, they're going to require more people to live under that roof to pay that mortgage or they're going to lose the house. And at, at the price that we're seeing for rent, people are going, or, you know, somebody's kids might be going, hey, I'm paying, you know, $2,500 in Orange County for a two bedroom apartment. Maybe I could just move back home with my parents and chip in a thousand or 500 and help them out and not be under this stress and stress and pressure where 50% of my income is going into a rent payment. A lot of people out there in this situation where maybe both both people have lost a job or spouses lost a job whatever the case may be they're falling behind they don't know what to do these people are now drowning in debt they've got car payments they've got auto insurance they've got cell phone bills they've got the mortgage payment they got the credit card payment they've got the college tuition debt you name it they got the payment. And these people now are drowning in debt. They don't know what to do. They don't have a life jacket, right? How long have all of us been talking about preparing, putting you know, a, 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 a couple bucks away for a rainy day, a, a, a emergency fund? Uh, because it's not always gonna be sunny out, ladies and gentlemen. And people didn't see the writing on the wall. And now uh, all this is becoming reality. And these same people who laughed, who said, you were wrong, I was wrong, that could never happen. I'll never lose my job. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll never need a government subsidy. I'll never be homeless. I'll never lose my car. I'll never be evicted. Now it's all happening to these, to these people. Many of these people that are in big trouble, um, as I said, drowning in debt, they had to borrow money from the same bank they got the mortgage from, they had to borrow money just to pay their property taxes, just to pay the property insurance during uh, this forbearance period. They're so far in debt, ladies and gentlemen, so far in debt. Roughly 73% of borrowers in foreclosure have more than 20% equity and about 28% have more than 50% equity. You would think having equity in your home would prevent people from defaulting on their loans. It should provide them the opportunity for 
for more of a soft landing, the ability to sell the home uh, at a profit, satisfy the debt to the lender, and have money left over to give them a chance uh, and get a fresh start after they sell the property. Why are a third of borrowers with at least 40% equity going to foreclose? going to foreclosure. Ask, ask yourself that. And if you have the answer, please comment down below. Is it because they're just tapping out because they, as this article says, where are they going to go? Um, what are they going to buy? Uh, to me, you may not have anywhere to go, but at least your credit will be intact. It won't be destroyed. And you'll have at least a few dollars to get on your feet, a few dollars to eat. Um, to me, to not sell right now at the height of this bubble and instead going to foreclosure just seems insane. It seems like a really, really, really uh, dumb decision. Uh, if you're in this situation, best thing you can do right now is get that house on the market because this housing bubble is going to burst, ladies and gentlemen, and this housing market right now as I make this video is cooling down, period, fact, end of story. It is cooling down. And the worst nightmare for these people will be or, or if you're in this situation, is home prices beginning to fall and fall quickly because then you don't have as much equity or you don't have equity in the home and then you're in big trouble. Then you're going to foreclosure. Then your credit's wrecked. And uh, then you walk away with no money. And when you have no money and your house is gone and we're in this type of environment with inflation soaring where uh, people aren't working, where everything is getting more expensive, what in the world are these people going to do? And again, they've got credit card debt, student loan debt, auto debt. They've got the, the lease payments. Uh, they have so much debt. I mean, they're financing the watch on their wrist. wrist. Um, what are these people going to do? So they're not really telling us what's happening in the housing market. They're not telling us what's happening uh, in the world of evictions and what ha what's happening to the 12 million households that were facing eviction just a couple months ago. So that tells me that probably a lot of people being evicted right now. And reading the story right here tells me we're going to see more properties coming on the market. We're going to see more foreclosures and we're going to see more desperate people, people that are going to be on the streets, people who whose credit's going to be destroyed, people who are not going to know what to do because they are about to lose everything. And so when you can't pay the bills and you have massive debt, like so many Americans do, and as we head into the greatest depression in history, these people are going to learn a very, very valuable lesson. It's going to be a tragic lesson. And if you're watching this video, don't be one of those people. You don't want to learn this lesson. Uh, if you're one of these people right now uh, dealing with this forbearance issue, maybe you really need to look at selling. Maybe, you know, if, if your spouse has lost a job, if you and your spouse lost a job, then you got to do the smart thing, and that is sell the property. And we're going to see more people do that. And if they don't do it, their bank is going to just foreclose, and the bank will do it for them. So these properties are coming uh, on the market at some point, whether it's from the homeowner or the bank who forecloses on the homeowner. These properties are coming. Hundreds of thousands of properties are coming. And this is during the good times, okay? Wait till 2022. As more people lose their jobs, as the inflation runs out of control and they're not going to be able to keep up with their bills, uh, their property taxes, their home insurance, uh, it, it's just, ladies and gentlemen, this whole thing is coming to a head, period, no doubt. You know it and I know it. And you need to get ready. So make sure that you're preparing uh, every which way possible, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. Uh, maybe this isn't the time to buy a house. Maybe you sit back and wait to see how things unfold in 2022. And uh, maybe if they get better and things uh, seem to uh, calm down, then, you know, maybe you dip your toes in the water. I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to see more volatility in the stock market. I think that we're going to begin to see the housing market unravel. I think we're going to see some big trouble in the stock market. And at the end of the day, the trouble in the economy is already here. I don't care if the Dow Jones goes to 300,000 
It doesn't matter to me. What matters is what's happening in this economy. Does the Dow Jones change your life at all? Did it change your life today when it went up over 600 points? Probably not. For most people, they're just worried about paying their, their auto payment, their rent, or their mortgage payment, and putting food on the table for, for their kids. That's what they're worried about. And the Dow Jones didn't help them today. This economy is paying the price for the stock market, okay? The economy has been sacrificed for the stock market. And the economy and the American people, the 90%, who are reliant and live in this economy and, and who need to work and who have to pay bills and have to go to the grocery store and put gas in their cars every day and every penny that that head of lettuce goes up or every penny that a gallon of gas goes up or a box of cookies goes up it affects the average american every day and they're the ones who are going to pay the price for the booming stock market while the economy is in shambles i'll leave it there today comment down below. Let me know what you think. We'll see what tomorrow brings. But when I see uh, a run-up like we saw today, these are the days that scare me the most because it's so fake what's happening and so manipulated. And this whole thing, as you know, is on borrowed time. So get ready because time is not your friend, ladies and gentlemen. Time is one of the most important assets you have, but it is not your friend right now because time is running out. These uh, volatile days, up up uh, 600, down 900, you know, down 650, up 500. This type of volatility is telling you something's wrong. There are no fundamentals here. This is all being pulled uh, with strings like a puppet, okay? And sooner or later, those strings are gonna fall off and they're gonna not be able to control this market like a puppet. The strings are gonna be cut, ladies and gentlemen, and the, they have no control of this puppet. And at that point, these people uh, who think that they're rich because they're, they're paper rich or they're rich because they own a house, the majority of Americans who think they're rich think they're rich because of their home, because their home value went up. It went up because of all the manipulation and all the magic tricks from the Fed, 0% interest rates, um, manipulating the stock market, putting 30-year uh, uh, rates at 2.75 and allowing people to buy more home than they can afford, okay? This is why people think they're rich because it's created a massive bubble in home prices. So, you know, uh, Joe Blow, who bought a house for 250 and now it's six, he thinks he's rich because he bought a home for 250 that's now $600,000. Joe Blow won't be rich when this bubble is pricked and the air begins to seep out of this housing bubble. Because when that same house goes back down to 350, 300, whatever, um, and after Joe Blow probably uh, uh, pulled, pulled uh, money out of the home, pulled an equity line out of the home, and now owes uh, 450, uh, Joe Blow now is upside down in big trouble. So it, look, this is so similar to what happened in 2008. But the environment is so much more dangerous now with more bubbles, um, massive uh, inflation, 0% interest rates. Big trouble, ladies and gentlemen. Be careful, be safe, and be prepared.